Hello and welcome to Theatre Reviews with Paul Seven. I'm here at Chichester Festival where the hills are alive with the sound of music. I arrived at Chichester Festival Theatre with a lot of prejudice against the sound of music. For a start, I've never liked nuns. Don't ask. And the use of children is so often manipulative. The story itself is sweeter than aspartame and the plot is flimsy to non-existent. And yet, this production conquered me as surely as Maria wins over Captain Von Trapp. Keep watching and I'll tell you why. But also why it's not quite a five-star show. First, may I ask you to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. You've almost certainly seen the film version of The Sound of Music. And you've definitely heard the songs from the soundtrack album because that was the UK's second best-selling album of the 60s. Only Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band outsold it. And it's still the number three best-selling soundtrack album of all time. So, even though it came first, the stage show tends to be overshadowed by its screen offspring. And the first thing to say is, no matter how saccharine you think the film is, the stage musical is sweeter. If there were ever any sharp edges to any of the characters, they'd been well and truly sandpapered. And the plot <laughs> verges on the invisible. There's a romance with the smallest of bumps in the road to marriage and the slightest touch of peril at the end. At least the film increases the peril. Uh, just to remind you, a novice nun goes to help a widower bring up his children. This is just before World War Two. He's Buttoned up, she's open in her emotions, he relaxes, they fall in love. And in the background, there's a battle between good and evil as the Nazis from Germany take over Austria and the Von Trapps are forced to flee. Shades of Russia invading the Ukraine, maybe? Well, not in this production. Then there's what we sometimes refer to as the attitudes of the time. In this case, a time in which a woman is encouraged to follow every rainbow till she finds her dream, provided that dream is finding a man who will protect her and that she can look after. But none of this matters because of Rodgers and Hammerstein's songs. And unlike some recent productions of their musicals where a modern eye has been cast over their perceived shortcomings, director Adam Penford has decided not to mess with this classic and just let those songs speak from the hearts of their creators to the hearts of the audience. In some ways, The Sound of Music seems like a big step backwards from the groundbreaking Oklahoma which launched their partnership, not to mention South Pacific, Carousel and The King and I. I mean, where is the grittiness? Where are the challenges to our thoughts and feelings? But in some ways, it's more modern in that the plot is treated as a, an excuse to show off a concept about the power of song. Song is the driving force for good in this musical. The hills are alive with it and... It's the pure emotion of the songs, rather than any narrative, through which characters are explored and developed. From the title song to Maria, as in How Do We Solve a Problem Like, uh, to My Favourite Things, Do Re Me, Sixteen Going On Seventeen, The Lonely Goat Herd, So Long Farewell, Edelweiss and Climb Every Mountain, the songs provide a lasso that captures your heart. So, what your head thinks really doesn't matter. Not that the songs are entirely beyond criticism. I mean, I wouldn't knock Richard Rodgers' music, but Oscar Hammerstein's lyrics can grate a bit at times. I mean, I think it's a shame the soaring power of Climb Every Mountain is slightly undermined by pedestrian lyrics such as A dream that will need all the love you can give every day of your life for as long as you live. And the rhyming of Adieu, Adieu, Adieu with Yeu and Yeu and Yeu in So Long Farewell is unforgivable. But then again he wrote, how do you keep a wave upon the sand? How do you hold a moonbeam in your hand? And of course raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, which admittedly sound like a random search of videos on YouTube, actually work perfectly. And the greatest strengths of this production are to do with the sound of the music. The exceptional quality of singing of all the cast, the stirring orchestral adaptations by Larry Blank and Mark Cumberland, and the strong orchestra under Matt Samer. But moving away from the music, 
In contrast to the film, some of the key characters are much less interesting in the original stage version. Uh, Maria's love rival Elsa is very nice, but that's about it. Although she is given a vivacious portrayal in this production by Emma Williams. Uh, the character of Captain Von Trapp has none of the depth of Christopher Plummer's movie version. Edward Harrison simply doesn't have enough to work with. But there isn't a problem with Maria. Gina Beck brings out all her inner Julie Andrews and Morbis eyes to give us a joyful but conflicted character, torn between her wish to serve God and her love of the secular world. Her voice is terrific, as is that of Janice Kelly, who plays the Mother Abbess. It's, it's an inspired idea to have an opera singer in this role, giving the part an added gravitas uh, and a striking contrast between her and Maria when they duet on My Favourite Thing. And she sends us out of the auditorium at the end of both acts with a rendition of Climb Every Mountain that is spine-tingling. Another performance that impresses is that by Akko Mitchell as the warm, humorous, but ultimately spineless Herr Detweiler, friend of the captain. And of course, damn it, along with whiskers on kittens and warm woolen mittens, there are the children. And much as you know you're being manipulated, it's hard for your resistance not to crumble when the children are as good as this on stage. Uh, let's not count the almost adult Liesel, who is beautifully played by Lauren Conroy. It's the other six, and of course the smallest Gretel most of all, who touch us with their vulnerability and innocence. In fact, on the night I saw it, Gretel disappeared almost as soon as the show began, and after a short break was replaced by Felicity Walton, who was superb. Uh, two teams alternate. I saw the yellow team plus Felicity from the green team, but I don't doubt each team is equally accomplished as they confidently sing, act and dance. And this is a good point at which to compliment the choreographer Lizzie G, a name always associated with the highest quality of work. You can also see the results of her creativity currently in Groundhog Day at the Old Vic. In this production, she presents one joyous routine after another, inspired by and enhancing the music. From the gaucheness of young love between Liesel and Rolf, played by Dylan Mason, in 16 going on 17, which sees them at first tentative in their contact until they end up gloriously splashing around in a fountain. Then there's the thrill of the first dance between the captain and Maria, which tells you all you need to know about their feelings for one another and the complex movements of the seven children, which show both their capacity for fun and their unity as a family. Captain Von Trapp himself couldn't have produced more disciplined kids. I have one disappointment to report, which is, surprisingly, the set. Robert Jones has a great track record, but I just don't think his design works on this occasion. I read in the programme what he was aiming at. Uh, he rightly leaves the thrust stage pretty empty, uh, because there's a big cast and a lot going on without bits of set to manoeuvre around. But the back of the stage is meant to represent the mountains by showing us dark, hewn rock capped off by the shape of a mountain range. The abbey, the Von Trapp house, the concert hall are then conjured up by pieces of scenery in front of it. But this gloomy set gives no sense of the Austrian open air, sky and nature that Maria and the captain loved so much, and that's meant to add contrast to the confines of the Abbey and the darkness of the Nazis. Where it does work is in the concert hall, a venue for the Von Trapp family's uh, public performance and finale, when it is draped with swastikas while Nazi soldiers stand in the aisles of the auditorium. A truly chilling moment. Anyway, my prejudices were swept aside by the power of the sound of Rogers and Hammerstein. Whatever you're feeling going in, you'll feel a lot better by the time you leave, as good conquers evil, and love conquers all. I give The Sound of Music at Chichester Festival Theatre four stars. I hope you found this video review uh, interesting, or at least useful, and uh, that you'll want to like and comment and subscribe to my channel, so that you'll be the first to know about future reviews. And you can uh, read my reviews at theatre.reviews. And indeed, you can follow me on threads, Twitter, Mastodon, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching.